In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to combine vector textures and the profile toolpath to create a number of interestingly textured panels. All the vectors used in this tutorial were created by the vector texture tool, which we covered previously in the vector drawing tutorial, which can be accessed through the related video section on this page. But first we need to close down this part and open the original vector drawing file that we created in the previous tutorial. So we'll go to file close, and with that, we can open up our vector textures vector drawing.crv file. And now we'll be presented with our save part with a number of different textures on separate layers. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is just check over these layers. So we'll go up into the layer menu and you'll see that we've got five in total. So we've got cutout, wave, step, swirl, and wood grain. So the first one in the list is cutout, and that's this rectangular vector, which is just a, a profile vector. So we can trim away the excess around the edge just to give us a seamless tile. So for now we can just switch that off and we'll start to look at the first of the four textures, so the wave pattern. And now we've just got that visible, we can switch over from our drawing menu to our toolpath menu. And we're gonna start by setting up our material. So we'll go to set to open up the material setup form. So we'll start with three quarter inch material. Our XY dating position will be in the lower left hand corner. We'll be machining off the material surface and we'll just briefly look over our rapid and home start positions just to make sure that they're safe and appropriate for our machine. So that's all looking good, so we can click OK to accept that. And now we can start looking to apply a profile toolpath to this vector pattern. So we're going to select the vectors first and then come up to the profile toolpath and we can start to look at our cutting depth. So we'll be starting from the material surface, so that's fine, and we'll be cutting down in this case by 0.1 of an inch. We're going to want to change our tool here, so we'll click select, and we're going to want to choose the quarter inch ball nose. Just checking over the tool settings. And we're going to machine on the vectors, and we don't need to worry about the rest of the form for this tool path, so we can just carry on and name that, and we'll name it the same as the layer wave, and we'll click calculate. So now you can see the tool paths displayed on the screen, following these profiles down to a depth of 0.1 of an inch. And I'm just going to simulate that toolpath now by previewing all toolpaths with that selected. And there now we can see the finished effect. So there are a couple of things to note as we're looking at this. And the first thing is these ridges that have been left behind by the tool as it's been coming in at an angle to start the first part of the wave. So these are the areas that we're going to need to trim away with that last profile pass that we talked about earlier. And that's why in the previous vector drawing tutorial, we chose to make the panels slightly oversized so that we could then cut them back to the required dimensions. Now, the second thing to note are these flat areas at the peak of the waves where the tool hasn't been able to remove all the material. So a good thing to do now to check this would be to have a look at it alongside the 2D view. So we'll come up to arrange views horizontally so that we can tile those. And we'll just zoom in quickly on the 2D view, just to the vectors we're using for our wave pattern. And we can just now check the distance between them. Now, we already know from when we were creating these vectors that the distance is 0.3 of an inch. And the tool that we're using is a quarter of an inch ball nose. So we can just simulate this quickly by creating a circular vector to mimic the tool. So there we've got a circle with a diameter of quarter of an inch exactly the same as our tool and we'll create another one. And if we just place these on the vectors, top and bottom, you'll see there that even though they're using the full diameter, we're still going to get this ridge of material left in the center. And that's exactly what you're seeing there at the top of the peak. And now we know that we need to be using a larger tool, we can do something about that. So I'll just delete out these two vectors. We'll go back over to our toolpaths menu and we're just going to reset the preview because we're going to make changes and re-enter into the 2D profile toolpath. And this time, instead of the quarter inch ball nose, we're going to select the half inch and calculate that again to recalculate it. And we can then preview all toolpaths again to re-simulate it, see the difference the changing tool has made. And with that done, we can now zoom in on this 3D preview and we can see that these ridges are now more defined without the flat spot because the tool is overlapping very slightly. So I'm really happy with how that's turned out now. So we can go back to the 2D view, just maximize that, and 
instead of viewing the wave layer, we're going to move on to the next pattern, which is the step. So we'll switch off the visibility of wave and switch on step, which if you remember from the previous tutorial is named that because it kind of diagonally steps up across the page. And with that now in view, we can look to apply these tool paths straight away. So we'll start by selecting the vectors together. We can close out the preview tool paths form now and come back up to the profile tool path icon to enter into the form. Our cutting depths are going to remain the same. So starting from the material surface and cutting down 0.1 of an inch. The spaces between these vectors are much the same as the wave. So we can carry on using the half inch ball nose. Again, we're going to machine on the vectors and we don't need to worry about the rest of the form and we can just come down and call this step in line with the layer and calculate. And once again, it'll open automatically into the preview toolpaths window, but we need to reset that to reset the previous toolpath. And then we can just view that in isolation, just making sure we've only got the step selected. We can choose preview visible toolpaths. And we can just have a look over the results of this really nice step pattern, which contains a lot of contrast. But as we've already created the wave pattern with the same tool, maybe we'd like to explore another option with the step pattern. So we'll go back into the tool path and instead of the half inch ball nose, we'll select a different tool. And this time I'm going to see how it looks using a V bit. So um, we'll start by using the half inch 90 degree. Diameter doesn't really matter in this case, but uh, the angle that we're looking for is correct here. So we'll use that one and click select to apply that and click calculate. And then now we're back into the preview toolpaths menu. We're going to undo the last and we're going to preview visible. And once again, in this case, because of the diameter of the tool, we're getting these flat spots. Uh, so it's wider where the vectors are further apart and it goes thinner where they're closer together, which does actually give off quite a nice effect. But if you did want to get rid of those flat spots and opt for the ridges instead, then we can do one of two things. We can either change the angle of the V bit or the depth of the toolpath. So we'll just have a look at those options. So we'll go back into the toolpath menu. And this time, instead of cutting down 0.1 of an inch, we're going to double that to 0.2. And don't need to change anything else. So we can just click calculate, undo last, and then preview visible again. And the result of that is a much deeper ridge pattern with a lot of contrast, which creates this very dynamic, almost holographic effect, which I'm actually really happy with. So we'll leave that one and come back over to the 2D view. And coming up to the layers menu again, we can switch off step and move on to the next pattern, swirl. And you'll actually see that after I've just changed the visibility there, I didn't actually make sure that the swirl pattern was the active layer. So we need to come back into that, click on swirl again to make sure that it's, the text is bold and that will indicate that that layer is the active layer. On this layer, we have this more variable texture, which we created in the vector tutorial using the vector texture tool. So we just go back into that tool just to look over the parameters again. We can see where we've set the amplitude, wavelength, and the noise level, and also the, the spacing. But we can see that we've used quite an amount of variation here with the slider over the 50% mark in order to create the effect that you see on the screen. So we can close out of that. And for this pattern, we're going to use something slightly different. So we'll go back over to our toolpaths menu, close out of the preview. And this time we're actually going to be looking to use the texture toolpath, which is actually a type of 2.5D toolpath, not available in the Cut2D software. So with that, we're going to switch over to discussing this in another tutorial, which is again available through the related video section to this tutorial.